Today we are making tonkatsu for no other reason than I just wanted some and thought I'd make a video out of it. But this dish is actually really easy to make at home and you can have it on your table in less than 30 minutes with most of the cleanup already done. So let's make this thing. Tonkatsu specifically refers to a fried pork cutlet. And according to Chef Morimoto's book, it is one of the most beloved dishes in Japan that you can make chicken and katsu or beef katsu using the method we'll cover today. Typically it is served with very thinly sliced cabbage and some other vegetables and a bowl of rice. But for making it at home, I prefer the meal to just be the fried cutlet with a dressed cabbage, which makes it a more balanced meal for me. I will prepare the cabbage salad ahead of time and to do this, very thinly slice some green or white cabbage. And I'm using a mandolin so I can get those tiny thin shreds, but this works just as well with a very sharp knife. Once the cabbage is shredded, let's prep the sauce. To a bowl, micro-grate a piece of ginger, a clove of garlic, and half a carrot. And using the micro-grater here almost creates a puree of the vegetables without having to use a blender. Next, zest about a quarter of a lemon and then add 20 grams of QP mayo, 5 grams of sriracha, 5 grams of rice wine vinegar, 5 grams of soy sauce, and finally 10 cranks of black pepper. Mix the sauce together and adjust the taste as you see fit. And I'll let you know right now that this sauce alone is worth making. The garlic, the ginger, and the carrot play so well, and it can be used in all sorts of things. The shredded cabbage and sauce can be mixed and stored ahead of time if you want, but I like to add a spoonful just before serving, so I'll keep them separate. But now let's move on to the main event. To start, get out two boneless pork chops. Tenderize and flatten the chops with the back of a knife or a meat tenderizer. And this process is mainly doing two things. One, it is thinning the chops and two, tenderizing. I like to thin the chops to roughly three fourths of an inch thick before frying. I just find it's a nice texture. And then for tenderizing, the back of the knife is bashing and starts to weaken the muscle fibers just a bit. And as Jay Kenji Lopez alt, it's kind of like pre-chewing your food. Once pounded, you should add a little salt here, but I forgot to. Salting after frying is just fine too. Before breading, set a wok on medium-low heat and add enough peanut oil for deep frying, about two inches up the pan. Now to set up the breading station, get out three trays and add 50 grams of flour and 25 grams of cornstarch to one, 50 grams of panko breadcrumbs to the second, and two beaten eggs to the third. Using your hands or a fork, first dip the pork into the flour mixture, coating the exterior before moving to the eggs to do the same, and then finally into the panko. And you really want to push the breadcrumbs into that egg to ensure it sticks to the exterior. Panko breadcrumbs are really that signature breadcrumb used for this dish and what makes it kind of that Japanese style. And they are lighter pieces with maximum surface area that provide an incredible crunch with little nooks and crannies. With the pork breaded, let's fry. At the stove, verify the temperature of the oil is between 325 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then slowly drop in the cutlets. You want to fry for about seven to nine minutes until they are perfectly golden brown and agitate them slightly to ensure that the hot oil keeps moving around the pork, which will create that nice evenly brown crust. Meanwhile though, you can quickly rinse those breading trays and those plates from earlier. Remember always cleaning as we go. And you can see after seven minutes, these cutlets are perfectly golden brown and crisp. You want to move the finished cutlets to a paper towel over a wire rack to kind of dab off some of that excess oil and then move them down to that lower rack on the metal to keep them crisp before adding a little sprink of salt. To me, this is what dreams are made of. A perfectly golden brown and crisp crust with that juicy meat. Let's take a moment to slice it up and enjoy the sounds.
Now, tonkatsu is typically served with tonkatsu sauce, which I just brought the Bulldog brand this time around, which many people say is quite good, but you could easily make some sauce of your own. Plate up the sliced pork and add a handful of the thinly sliced cabbage, the bowl of tonkatsu sauce, and top that cabbage with some of that delicious ginger garlic carrot sauce. And one last thing, make sure you save your frying oil. There is no point in wasting it. Just pour it into a fine mesh sieve with a paper towel in it and enjoy it for next time. But now, let us consume. All right, everybody, taste test time. I mean, I know I'm gonna enjoy this. It's, you know, it's a deep fried pork chop. But this has been sitting for like 10 minutes and it's still super, super crunchy. Just listen in. Let's get a nice little dip with the tonkatsu sauce. So as I was saying, I mean, it's it's a deep fried pork chop. You're gonna like it. It's There's nothing, you know, that's that's out of the ordinary. If you like pork chops, if you like fried food, you're gonna like this. The tonkatsu sauce is really nice. It's actually fairly uh, Worcestershire sauce forward, which I didn't realize, I'd always seen it in recipes, and I was like, man, I feel like that's a lot of Worcestershire sauce, um, which I didn't really like, um, but it definitely is like that in a store-bought version too. So if I was making a version of the katsu sauce, I probably would use much less uh, Worcestershire, just a personal preference. It's not bad, um, but that's just, you know, just verbal preference. And then as far as this little cabbage salad, it is literally the perfect accompaniment to the, you know, the heavier breaded deep fried piece of meat. It's, it's fresh, um, the ginger, the garlic, a little bit of spiciness from the sriracha in there. It really plays well. I mean, this would make a killer just mix these two up, put them on a sandwich, do something like that, or just eat it like this, you know, this plain version, or make it into like a rice bowl. That would be really cool too. Um, for me, you know, if I'm gonna eat a massive pork cutlet, I typically would just eat with cabbage salad, and that's, you know, plenty satisfying. So hopefully you guys all make this dish. The recipe will be up on my website. And like I said, it's really, really quite easy. You can have this done in like 30 minutes, and it's absolutely delicious. So that's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.